Hey guys, what's up, Aru? As a Senora Simp and an avid Harbinger Enjoyer, who's to say that she is actually dead? A theorist like me? Nay. A burial without a body? Nay. The only death and ending worthy of an anime series is a death with sad monologues and redemption scenes that make you feel bad for hating a character. If you have ever in your life watched Demon Slayer, then you know very well that the death of a villain is not justified until the flashbacks of their story is actually shown on screen. But we won't be talking about why Senora isn't dead yet. We'll be talking about the philosophy that is personified in Senora's entire lore. The subtle yet important presence that she has in the little scenes we see her up until her defeat and where her desperation and struggle is finally unveiled in the most glorious yet symbolic way possible, all while maintaining her resentment and ignorance throughout her fleeting screen time. This will be the first video in a series where I discuss a character's inner workings and hidden philosophies that they represent, how symbolic they are within the game and their personal struggles within lore that are relatable to the experiences and struggles mirrored in real life scenarios. And there is an actual message and personal struggle within Senora's brief yet aggressive and condescending narrative that's really applicable to anyone. Sadly, that narrative isn't made apparent but is subconsciously put in our minds. And is why I think a lot of people still think Senora is still alive. Although Senora isn't my favorite Harbinger out of the three that we have in-game so far, she hits a very soft spot in my life that I'm sure everyone relates to at a spiritual level. Because of course, the most terrifying Harbinger is and always will be Timmy. <sighs> I shudder at the thought. But yes, Senora. Now in order to become known for resentment, a character must first make the viewer feel resentment and hate towards them. And what better way than by stating the absolute fact that Senora gave us the most perfect introduction to who the Fatui are, what their goal is, and what they intend to do with anyone who stands in their way. Completely freezing the most powerful being in the world, Paimon, with just a snap of her fingers, grabbing Venti's face like she's looking at some sort of test subject, and slapping him like Batman slaps Robin. And to top it off, grabbing his noses like Doom guy and kicking him while he's down. <laughs> oh boy. By doing that, Poyo not only awakened every mummy simp's radophilia fetish, but also triggering every venti simp in the entire game by flogging him and become the face of the villainous Fatui that we all hated in the beginning. All in the span of one second. Now that we know her for her resentment, how can she be a relatable character? Well, for a character to be relatable and lovable, they must either have these two qualities. One is to be compensating for a flaw, trying to move past it, or that they emulate the perfect character that they can never be. And Senora, oh bless her heart, is trying to have both of these qualities in the most twisted way while tragically taking the worst L's in the history of Genshin. Which in itself is the most relatable trait that we all strive to do and what some of us have also experienced. First is her trying to move past a flaw in her life, which is found in her backstory. And her way of moving past that flaw is by taking the darkest steps possible. A young scholar who was in love with an uprising knight, Senora and Rostam were supposed to have the sweetest reunion of all. One returns from being a Favonius knight and the other returns from her studies in the most reputable school in the world. But it ended in the worst way possible. Senora returns to Rostam but Rostam is no longer there and Senora is left with a choice in her life that either Either sets her up to be the tragic hero or the evil villain. And she takes the side of the villain. And in what looks like the ending of a Romeo Juliet scene, Signora sacrifices her life to become the manifestation of liquid fire. And after that, she even goes all the way to erase every memory of her past by taking up a delusion, losing a loved one in her almost princess tale that ended in tragedy. And the following decisions she makes is the form of the first quality she took for being a lovable and relatable character. This tragic backstory isn't her main point as a relatable character, however. The following events ignited her philosophy and lets us bask in the Senora we see currently. Now, let's talk about her second quality. Wanting to emulate the perfect character she can never be. Which is why she's such a character of resentment and desperate struggle. Because the delusion she took is where her actual delusion begins and creates 
her perfect character that she never had. At first glance, you see her demeanor of this high and mighty, sophisticated and cunning person paired with her self-centered and spiteful personality and her looking down basically on anything that she sees is the perfect delusion that someone who lost everything in their life imagines. But it's also the perfect role model for her fellow Fatui subordinates. Senora personifies how a Fatui member is and what emulating perfection should be. And her cryo delusion is the symbolizing item for her very real delusion that she now has. Her cold and unfazed duty to whatever needs to be done for the sake of the cryo archon and a very symbolic part of her emulation of being the perfect character. The lady who knows every step she took and is untouchable to anyone else is but a facade that she created for her own sake. But through that, she also symbolized the relation between Sneznaya and their Archon. Even though she has little care for the queen, she personified the feelings of every member of the Fatui. Those of Sneznaya hate their queen, the Saritsa, but nonetheless do their duty. Maybe not for her, but for the preparation of the inevitable and impending doom that's to come. That is, the darkness that consumes all. To members of the Fatui, the game doesn't end at checkmate. And I don't think I've understood this saying until maybe the point where I felt really defeated. Because utter defeat is where you will start to understand this saying philosophically. Checkmate is where the real battle starts. Because once you've lost and defeat is inevitable, you then are left to struggle ever so desperately even though you know that it's futile. And that desperate struggle of an individual is something one should be wary of, which is also what every Sneznayan has and what Signora herself made manifest. Her cryovision represents the duty a Sneznayan has to the Saritza as well as the inevitable doom that looms over the blizzards of their region, which is also a metaphor for the storms in their really cold country. But her pyrovision represents the desperate struggle and resentment against everything that has happened in life. Think of the cryovision as a cold blizzard coming to consume everything, and the pyrovision is a representation of hope and light that a person has when overcome by a blizzard. The pyrovision is also symbolic to her true self that can never attain the perfect character that she once emulated. Hence why you see a somewhat dual personality from our first encounter with Signora and how she is forced to turn back to her old self as a blazing butterfly in her boss fight. Because hiding within that cold, cunning, and perfect exterior carries within it the resentment built up from someone who had a near-perfect life made most imperfect and just waiting to erupt. Senora's name itself also symbolizes her entire life in one full name too. Rosaline Kruchka Lohevalter. Um, forgive me if I butchered that. From my slightest knowledge of translations, Rosaline means beautiful, pretty rose, and gentle horse. Keywords gentle and rose, which I think is where her crimson colors and also the name crimson which of flames come from. But Gentle and Rose don't pair with her personality and Senora overall. And that's because her second name means either a deep descent or to destroy, which is basically what happened in her life. Finally, Lohevalter or Lohevalter meaning blazing butterfly. So there you go, Rosaline Kruchka Lohevalter. Someone who was so gentle but then fell to a steep descent and destroyed herself and becoming the blazing butterfly or the crimson witch of flames. Which fits both her tragic backstory and her two-faced persona or twisted life experiences as well as symbolizing the end of her story in patch 2.1. Whether or not she survives or she comes back later or if she's actually dead, we don't know. But nonetheless, this was how Senora viewed everything from her perspective, in my opinion. Senora's two-faced personality and outcome of her story within the game is something that hits home for me all too well. And it's that those two faces both conflict one another in the worst ways possible. The result of it all is the utter and complete loss of everything. This is also a trait that you can find in the people of Sneznaya and the members of the Fatui. Even though almost every member of the Fatui hate or at least don't like each other, they still stay together using that hatred. And use it they did, to a point that they become cold 
cold and indifferent to everything else but themselves and the people that they cared for. I'd argue that Senora's hatred and anguish in the game mirrors everyone's resentment and indifference in real life as well. As someone who suppressed her real feelings and even memories by joining the Fatui and obtaining a delusion, clinging to a fake persona and becoming cold and uncaring for anything but herself after losing someone or something close to them, she in my opinion is the very person we sometimes become in times of strife and constant pressure. And it doesn't even have to be resentment or hate either. Her way of suppressing her old life using a persona that isn't true to herself or using objects and habits as a coping mechanism for a bad experience, it's something that every one of us has done or is about to do or has yet to experience in their lives. And at the same time, we all deny it. The same way Senora denies her past self, we deny ourselves who we truly are. Her backstory paired with the events in the game is the ultimate L. Despite how hard Senora tried both in her maiden days 500 years ago and her current life as a harbinger, all her effort studying in the academia and her success taking both the Animo and Geonosis, and she still took two of the biggest L's ever. At least Zhong Li still redeemed himself by retiring from being an Archon, and Venti, well, he's Venti. Only he knows what's planned for him. But Senora, man, losing the love of your life, erasing your own memory, and finally losing to an alien with a floating food ration companion. And what's worse was that she was finished off by Teyvat's most confused character ever. Hey, but that's for a different video. Senora is, if I may, the epitome of folly and struggle that everyone in the Fatui stand by as well as the symbol of every Sneznayan's spiteful indifference yet stern duty toward the Saritsa. She not only relates to every person who has had a great regret in life and those who made the worst choices, but to everyone who's ever failed miserably even though they did their very best until the end. Finally, she's a relatable character for every one of us who are delusional and think of a perfect version of ourselves, knowing that we may never achieve such heights. I hazard a guess that she may also be the most unlucky person despite all her achievements. She still failed due to how fate lined up everything against her odds. She truly is, in my opinion, the face of resentment and struggle that we all experienced or have yet to experience. So there you have it, the first of I don't know how many videos I'll make in regards to the philosophical level of Genshin Impact's characters, namely Senora or Rosalind Krutska Lohevalter. So did you also think that Senora held some sort of message within her fleeting screen time and lore? Or did you think that she's just a spiteful person who just hates everything? The next video in this series is gonna take a while <laughs> till I put some thought into every character's perspective and really get into the nitty gritty side of their minds. But yes, this will be an ongoing series that I will do until, well, I run out of characters. So if you have a character that you would want me to do a more in-depth analysis of their personality and their philosophical side instead of theory, please don't hesitate to comment below and I will do what I can to make a video about them. If you're interested in seeing more of these kinds of videos in the future, then I suggest clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell icon so you can be the first to watch my video as it comes out. I hope you guys enjoy this more perspective perspective and personal side of characters type of video because this was a lot of fun to make since it's more reading into a specific person's purview than predicting the game based on Hoyo's releases. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support your boy, go check out my other socials all linked down below. And thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!